Okay, so guys, I'm just going to read you the speech that Lamas gave. And the idea is that you'll be able to draw a few tidbits from it. Um, so my suggestion would be just to jot down a few ideas that you take from that that you could then add into an essay about Sean Lamas, his um, impact on Irish politics, him um, bringing about unprecedented change, his involvement in the first programme of economic expansion, etc. So he begins by saying, the Fianna Fáil party has accepted the conclusion that the economic development programme, which it initiated 25 years ago, notwithstanding its many and very substantial achievements and its subsequent, subsequent acceptance by all political parties, has not proved to be sufficient to bring about all the economic and social progress which we desired and which we believe can be accomplished. So that's saying a no to protectionism. We have used this present period of release from immediate responsibility for government in reviewing our programme and preparing new plans so that under Fianna Fáil leadership, the nation can experience another era of advancement. The proposals which I'm about to outline when completed will form an integral part of these plans. Briefly, these proposals are based on the view that the successful application of a sound development policy requires an adequate and carefully prepared investment programme and will depend on the country's capacity to execute such a programme and that this investment programme must, in its early stages, be undertaken mainly by the government. We do not believe, however, that Irish progress and prosperity can be secured by government action alone, and an essential part of the proposals are therefore concerned with the promotion of sufficient and expanding volume of investment on private account. The aims of the proposals are firstly to give the national economy the necessary initial boost, secondly to bring about an increase in private investment activity to the extent required to secure an adequate and continuing expansion of the scope and efficiency of private productive enterprise, and thirdly to show that the effort needed is beyond the country is not beyond the country's possibilities. Okay, so he's calling on um, private business to become more innovative. That we will he he's essentially saying the government will help you to help yourself, basically. So the main proposal is that as a first step to the attainment of full employment, the government should undertake a positive spending programme spread over a five year period. This should be financed otherwise than by taxation or by borrowing from current savings and planned on a scale estimated to be sufficient, taking into account the volume of private activity to raise total national outlay, private consumption spending, plus private business investment, plus public authority expenditure, to a level calculated to be adequate to set up a demand for the whole of the labour available for employment. In conjunction with that programme of investment expenditure, other measures must also be adopted to increase the volume of savings and to direct these savings to investment in Ireland to an extent that will ensure in subsequent years a satisfactory economic and social position without abnormal government support. Okay, so the idea of um, the government, what he's talking about here is the idea of the government providing a scaffolding for the economy. So we will provide um, funding, grants, etc., support essentially for private business to innovate, to um, employ more people, etc., etc., and then gradually over time remove those supports once the business is able to support itself. In other words, he goes on to say, our view is that the government must carry the main burden in the first instance, but must so arrange its programme that it can gradually fade out of the picture, leaving private economic activity the main basis of national prosperity. Okay, so that private business is the main um, source of economic development. It is clear that the scale of the public expenditure which will be required to bring national outlay to full employment within five years will be considerable. Fianna Fáil rejects the view that it is sometimes propagated in a section of the press and elsewhere that the sole object of government policy should be to keep public expenditure at its lowest le possible level. The primary aims of Fianna Fáil's policy have been in the past, and will always be, to increase the nation's wealth and to improve the living conditions of the people. These aims override other considerations. On the average, during the year, 8.1% of workers were unemployed. Since 1946, the to total labour force has declined by 61,000. That is at an annual rate of over 7,500 persons or 
0.6% per annum. Net immigration averages about 25,000 per year, of which from one half to two thirds may be assumed to be preventable in the sense that a fair prospect of security of employment in Ireland would keep that number from emigrating. So he's saying here that the number is so high, there will always be immigration. However, that two thirds from one half half to two thirds of that could be preventable. So that's a huge figure. It is safe to assume, however, that an increase over five years in the number of jobs by 100,000 or an average rate of increase of 20,000 per year would result in full employment as ordinarily understood and the end of abnormal immigration. So abnormal immigration, immigration that could be prevented. Indeed, this calculation may exaggerate the position, but it is wiser, it is wiser to plan on an adequate rather than an inadequate scale. At the end of the five years, 15,000 new jobs per annum should enable full employment to be maintained. The proposals which I have outlined can do no more than ensure that the efforts of the Irish people to improve their living conditions, to end unemployment and to reduce immigration will be facilitated by a proper disposal of national resources and not impeded by their partial immobilisation at present. They are put forward in the belief that this country's inability to achieve the same employment conditions and living standards as other small West European countries is due solely to the circumstances which have prevented the full utilisation of available resources and not to any incapacity of the Irish people to accomplish the same productive effort as these other countries have achieved. It is along these lines that Fianna Fáil is planning the nation's future progress. In the present task of completing these plans and the ultimate task of fulfilling them, Fianna Fáil asks the cooperation and support of all sections of the Irish people. Okay, so he's asking, and that's the end of the speech, um, he's asking for people to be supportive, for people to um, at least give time to consider the various elements of the plan um, and not to write it off without first investigating it further. Okay, so what I want you guys to do is to look at these two videos that I've just posted to um, take some notes from them, some ideas that you think would be useful if you were to talk about the impact that Sean Lamas had on the Irish economy um, or Irish politics indeed between 1958 and 1968. Okay, that's the period that we'll be, go we'll be looking at in terms of his leadership. Um, and then I will talk through um, some of the PowerPoints that we've done on that at a later date.